Great, so it's great to have you here today, and even though you and I have met a couple of times and I actually know what you're doing, the rest of the audience doesn't. So I'll just start with that. What is it that you do, for whom, what problem are you solving? Yeah, so, so obviously uh, we all know the big revolution around cloud computing that is happening right now. And uh, one of the interesting things is that it's in a major way moving into enterprises of all sizes that are moving sensitive data into the cloud, which is not what it was five years ago, but it is what it is today. And uh, when we thought about that problem, we understood that people want to put their compute in the cloud, people want to put their data in the cloud, but the one thing they don't want to give away if their data is sensitive is the ownership of that data. So my partner here is uh, with us and uh, our team is here with us. Uh, some of it, and uh, what we thought uh, looking at this is how do we actually solve that problem, allow you to retain the ownership for yourself even though you're using the cloud. So we invented some encryption and especially encryption key management technology that allows you basically to take a key to your data, put it in your safe, in your drawer, close it, keep it there. It actually never leaves there in an unencrypted form and uh, yet it controls everything that you do through some special math. And we like to say that we're safer than hardware because math is stronger than walls and is stronger than metal boxes. Wonderful, so for, for those who are not specialists of encryption, it's very important that the key stays with the owner of the data because otherwise somebody, say NSA, uh, can show up at the hosting uh, provider and say, well, we want the data and since they have the key, they have to give the data. Here they would have to go to the end user and say, hey, I want the key to the data because that's the only way I get to see it. So it's very important to understand those concepts and, and you do a great job of explaining why, why they're relevant. So what does a customer look like for you? Are they a small company? Are they a big company? So we're actually at a very interesting phase right now. As you all know, there's this, there was this rumor that uh, cloud computing was about small companies and that it's transitioning into enterprises. And what we're seeing is that when we use inbound marketing and inside sales, use the web, we are actually bringing in those SMEs who do have health data and big data needs, and uh, they do have financial data. And then we're seeing that through some of the channel opportunities that we've created, we have, for example, done a deal with uh, HP, which is really major for us. HP has an amazing pipeline of uh, friends and uh, family. Uh, that they can bring to the table. So we are moving now very strongly also into the bigger enterprises and we're seeing really the way that this market is ramping up for us uh, using both of those channels. Wonderful. So give me an example maybe of a, of a customer and the cycle of convincing them, selling to them and then the benefits that they have seen. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's take for example an, an insurance company we work with which is using us both in their private cloud and in their public cloud, which is their disaster recovery. And uh, imagine, uh, folks, that you are an employee of some place and you've got cost and benefit insurance. Everybody here has it. Uh, and of course, uh, your employer wants to be sure that they data is super safe. So insurance company must protect that. It's financial data, it's health data, it meets all the regulations, it also must meet Sabrina's-Oxley, it must meet everything. Yeah? So these people really had a headache. And uh, since they were offering their solution as available over the web, what they did is they used our solution, our port core, in order to secure their private data center. And then they also used that in order to secure their public disaster recovery data center. And then they got hit by Hurricane Sandy, real story. So they switched over to their public disaster recovery data center and were working again same day. It was a hot swappable uh, solution. Both the public and the private data centers were fully encrypted, fully compliant, and they also had their applications running in both of these, one of them in sleep mode, one of them actually waking up, and then when Sandy hit them, they just switched. And that's one example of what we do for people, helping them meet all of the compliance requirements of their customers. So one of the big thing against encryption is if it's encrypted, you can't really work on it and you got decrypted, in which case you lost the whole benefit. Mm. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so, so uh, we actually have worked very, very hard to make this a transparent solution. So today uh, we have something that we call snap-ins. 
And the idea of these snap-ins is that for all of the major use cases that you want, you'll get an up in five minute solution. So it's not just about very, very complicated mathematics that manages the keys of the encryption, but also these snap-ins that, you know, if you're using disks in Amazon or VMware, we'll give you a snap-in. If you're using Oracle or MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server, we'll give you a snap-in. We'll work with Cassandra, we'll work with MongoDB, we'll work with Amazon S3, and we'll also give you an API so that you can do your crazy thing. So we solve all of the major use cases for you, Hadoop, whatever, and uh, of course, if you want to do something a little bit more advanced, we'll give you the strongest API in the market in order to do this in a very cloud-friendly and flexible way. Excellent. So you said you have a relationship with HP. Yeah, absolutely. Any, any other indirect relationship or the rest is going to be direct? Oh, uh, what we're doing is uh, developing additional uh, uh, channel relationships. So right now, NTT, for example, I assume you've heard about them. Uh, they have a huge cloud initiative and they're a partner and a couple of things are in the cookbook that we're not yet publishing. So we have this very strong channel relationship that we're building up and which is going to be driving some of our bigger enterprise opportunities. And we have the website driving the inbound marketing for the SMEs. Sounds good, sounds like a company in expansion. So you have a bunch of people in the audience, you have other people that are gonna hear about it. What are you looking for here today? Yeah, so actually I'm in a good place today uh, where we uh, have customers, we have traction, and we have money. So why I'm here today, first of all, to get to know you folks, I think that next year we're basically a startup that is in the transition from the early stage to the growth stage. That's where we are today. We haven't completed that transition, but that's where we are. And I think that next year we will be wanting to talk to some of you folks in order to do that next stage, uh, which is, you know, a VC discussion here in Silicon Valley. And uh, I don't need money now, but I do want to get to know you folks and to start the conversations. Wonderful. Questions from the audience? <laughs> I, you know, I love when those guys are so clear that people go like, yep, I got it. Thank you. Goodbye. You All right. You got rid of me. It's no problem. You got rid of me. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs>